guys, welcome back. Mama Dr. Jones, OBGYN, a mom to four. Today is March 21st, 2020, and I'm updating you on COVID-19 and pregnancy. This information is dynamic. It is evolving daily. So everything I tell you today will be up to date to the best of my ability, and I will let you know if something changes. Okay, to start this off, we need personal protective equipment, we being frontline healthcare workers. There's already a shortage, and we are still at the very early stages of this outbreak in the United States. The CDC recently came out and made a statement about this, saying that in a worst case scenario, they suggested us using bandanas to cover our faces. If you wouldn't find it acceptable to send a tactical officer on a SWAT team into negotiations wearing four t-shirts because they were out of bulletproof vests, then you shouldn't find this acceptable for your frontline healthcare professionals. If we don't take care of the people on the front lines, there will be no one left to take care of you when you get sick. We have seen an unusually high percentage of healthcare professionals affected by this virus in other countries and also in certain parts of the United States already. So what can you do about this? If you or someone you know works in an office which is temporarily closing and has equipment like this, or if you or someone you know is keeping a stockpile of equipment like this, please consider donating it. If you have something like that and you don't know where to donate it, get in touch with me, I will help you find a place. From the last video, you know that so far there had been no maternal deaths. That still stands. I have not seen any reports of maternal deaths thus far from COVID-19. That being said, we still do not have a lot more information than we had last time with regards to how this virus is affecting people who are pregnant and newborns. The question you guys have been sending me is why then did the prime minister in the UK put pregnant people into this super high risk category and suggest that they should not be going to work or doing anything for the next 12 weeks? As I mentioned in my last video, all the data we have right now points to the fact that people who are pregnant do not seem to be at an increased risk of catching this virus, nor do they seem to be faring worse with regards to outcomes if they do catch it. We also know that with SARS and MERS, the last outbreaks we had that were kind of similar to this, but maybe on a little bit smaller scale, that pregnant people did have worse outcomes. And we know that people who are pregnant and get other viral upper respiratory or lower respiratory infections tend to do worse. Given those unknowns, I think it is appropriate to consider people who are pregnant in a high risk category. It's still an unknown, and a lot of data from other things makes us think that there is a potential for this to be worse in people who are pregnant. The good news is we don't have anything to support that right now, but we should still be really cautious. This one is not specific to pregnancy, but it's really important. What we're finding out is a lot of people could be spreading this virus through asymptomatic shedding. That means that you may have the virus and be able to give it to other people, but not have any symptoms. We're learning this from a few studies that suggested it was probably possible. And then we got some information from South Korea where they've done a lot more widespread testing. It's looking like about 30% of their cases have been in people who were relatively young, 20s and 30s. And a lot of those people had no symptoms, but were able to share the virus with other people. What does this mean to us? Please, please practice social distancing. It may not seem important if you feel fine, but you should proceed as though you have the virus already and you don't want to give it to anyone. Social distancing means going to work if you have to, working from home if you can, minimizing any outside contact or any outside trips that aren't absolutely necessary. You need to go to the grocery store. You need to get gas in your car. That's fine. Try to minimize that. Try to do it only when absolutely needed. This is the only way we are going to make this better. You guys have been asking about vertical transmission, meaning spread from mom through placenta to baby. In the last video, I said that we don't have any evidence that this is occurring. Since then, you've been sending me a article that was semi-viral on the internet about a baby who was diagnosed at 36 hours of age. Does this change what I said in the last video? I don't think so. If you read the article, they even say in it that they aren't sure if the baby contracted the virus during delivery or soon after, and they don't have any real good reason to think it happened before delivery. They don't have a positive placenta, they don't have a positive amniotic fluid, they don't have positive cord blood. But when you look at that compared to the fact that we have a study that looked at some babies, not a lot, but as many as we could, with moms who had COVID-19 at the time of delivery, and they looked at amniotic fluid, cord blood, and placentas, all of those were negative. This isn't the first baby who's been diagnosed relatively soon after birth, but I don't think we have any information right now that says that it happened before birth. Does that make sense? It would be entirely possible that we eventually figure out that this is happening, but right now, based on the data that we have, and based on data from other outbreaks with similar viruses, there does not seem to be any evidence 
that strongly supports vertical transmission. If you want more information about how babies and kids do with this virus, check out my last video. It should be up to date as of the date that I posted it, and I think most of it is still pretty applicable right now. Okay, let's cover some questions that you guys have sent me since the last video or that you asked originally and I didn't get to in the last video. One of them that has super commonly been asked is, I'm trying to get pregnant, should I stop? The answer to this, unfortunately, is we really don't know. The American Society of Reproductive Medicine and some of the international reproductive societies have recommended stopping ovulation induction and IVF and IUI. How do we extrapolate that from people who are using assisted reproductive therapies to people who are just trying to get pregnant? There's not a really easy answer to that. Part of it just comes down to your personal comfort level, knowing that I can't tell you what the actual risk is. So although we don't have any information on early pregnancy with SARS-CoV-2, we do have some data, not very much, but a little bit, from SARS-CoV-1 and MERS. Neither one of those viruses seem to be teratogenic, which means causing fetal malformations. There may have been a slight increased risk in miscarriage for people who got that virus, either one of those viruses, in the early parts of pregnancy, but again, really small sample sizes, so hard to draw that conclusion directly. On the flip side, people who get really high fevers in the early parts of pregnancy do seem to be at an increased risk of fetal malformations, and we know that SARS-CoV-2 tends to cause really high fevers in a lot of people. I do think it's worth considering that if they are recommending stopping all of the procedures that make all of the money in their field, plus the fact that they're the experts, it might be worth listening to. Another thing you really need to consider are the mental effects on you. Are you going to be super anxious getting pregnant and not knowing what to expect? Recognizing that it's a cautious recommendation to maybe take it slow, skip a couple of months and see where we are. I don't wanna say that and cause panic. If you get a positive pregnancy test next month, chances are everything is going to be fine. Please don't let this steal the joy from your pregnancy. We just have to take it one step at a time, one day at a time and just get through this together. Next question I've been getting, are the people who are pregnant with COVID-19 being forced into C-sections? I can kind of understand where this rumor got started. If you look at the data coming out of China, you will see that out of the relatively few cases we have to look at, a large percentage of them have delivered by cesarean section. However, drawing the conclusion that they were forced into a C-section is relatively unsubstantiated based on the fact that all we know about them is that they were pregnant, had COVID-19, and delivered by C-section. People who are sick, especially with a febrile illness, have a tendency to have babies who are also sick. In the course of labor, they are more likely to have fetal distress or abnormalities in the baby's heart rate, which require a C-section to safely deliver the baby. Another thing we know is that with almost any illness, when mom is really sick, delivering the baby improves her status greatly. It happens with flu, it happens with almost every underlying health condition, so it likely happens with COVID-19 as well. It's quite possible that some of these deliveries were happening in an expedited manner through a c-section rather than an induction because the mom was really sick and they needed to get the baby delivered to help her get better faster. We also don't know much about what they look like walking the door, what their history was, had they had c-sections before, was the baby breech? We have a very small subset of patients to look at and we really don't have any more information about them other than the way that they delivered. At the end of the day, this is a discussion between the patient and her doctor and certainly is not a place to be putting rumors about coercion. Another question that you guys have been asking is, should I just have a home birth? No, you should not do that. Don't have your baby at home because of this. However, you should expect that it might look a little different and there will be some changes. Some of the changes that you can expect are a limited number of visitors on labor and delivery and postpartum. Most hospitals are limiting visitors to one per person and nobody under the age of 16. Why? This is an attempt to both limit the number of people coming through the doors who could give the virus to staff and patients in the hospital and also to protect you and your family from getting the virus in the hospital and taking it out with you. You may also see a situation where we're trying to expedite discharge. Once you are safe to go home from the hospital, we should be letting you go home. We wanna free up beds, we wanna keep you away from sick people who are in the hospital as much as possible, and we wanna make sure everybody is the safest they can be. I've also seen a few people asking about your doctor's visits or your doctor canceling visits. There's a big push right now to minimize unnecessary visits into the clinic and into the hospital. This does not mean that your doctor is going to cancel visits that you must be seen in person for and it doesn't mean they're going to close up shop and abandon you and not be able to see you. Some of your visits may look a little bit different, maybe through telemedicine like Skype or phone call. We love our patients. We want the best for you. If we are moving your visits to telemedicine or phone call, it's because we think that visit can safely be done in that manner. We want to keep you out of the clinic, away from sick people, and reduce your chances of getting the virus. I know this is such a crazy time to be pregnant. I've talked to my patients about 
about this at length and it is hard to be pregnant in a time where there are so many unknowns and unprecedented levels of confusion and fear. I urge you to not let this steal the joy from your pregnancy. I know it's hard, it's confusing and it's a little bit scary, but we have to take it one step at a time and we will all get through this together. When you feel those feelings of anxiety and confusion coming, it's so important to feel them and acknowledge them, know that they're happening, know that they're warranted in a time of unknowns and then let them go. Ignoring them and letting them build up or focusing on them so much that you can't think about anything else, neither of those are good things for you or baby. Feel them, acknowledge them, and let them go. If you're having trouble doing that and you feel yourself becoming more and more anxious or more and more worried or sad or depressed, talk to your doctor or your advanced practice provider or your counselor or someone who can help you. It's so important to talk about these things. It's really, really common and normal to have these feelings. Let someone help you figure out how to best take care of you and your baby. The new information on pregnancy and COVID-19 comes slowly. I may not make an update video every week or even every two weeks. I'm just going to update as I get questions that I can answer and as we have new information. In the meantime, if you want more information on COVID-19, I have linked some really great evidence-based, reliable, and non-sensational med YouTubers in the description down below. I did a live call-in Q&A with Jimmy Snow, which I will also link below. It's about an hour and a half long, so listen to it podcast style, get some information about COVID-19, not specific to pregnancy. Thanks for being here today, guys. Wash your hands, stay away from people, stay in your house, social distancing, do the best you can kind to yourself, to each other, to me, in the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.